This is the video lecture on earnings per share. Now in a previous video we talked about the basic earnings per share formula and we're going to review that formula once again. And that formula would be the net income minus preferred dividends divided by weighted average number of shares. If you consider each component of the formula individually, first of all you have the net income and that simply comes from the income statement. Very simple and very straightforward. Then you have the preferred dividends. And of course, a lot of companies don't actually even sell preferred stock. So if that's the case, you don't actually have to worry about preferred dividends. But if they do sell preferred stock, you would certainly want to include those dividends in your EPS formula. And then the third component would be the weighted average number of shares. Now we're going to focus for a little while on the weighted average number of shares because that particular component can sometimes be fairly simple but then again for certain companies that part of it can actually be fairly complicated. If you look at this example this is a business that has a net income of one million dollars no preferred dividends and they had 100,000 shares of stock and it also says that the stock was outstanding for the entire year. Well, that's actually good news because that makes this particular example a lot easier. If they had the same number of shares the entire year, then we don't actually have to calculate an average. And notice that they have no preferred dividends. So that means we can leave that out as well. So the actual EPS calculation for this company would simply be the $1 million net income divided by 100,000 shares, which gives you $10 of EPS. So in other words, the company made $10 per share of common stock. Now, sometimes the number of shares can be a little bit more complicated. And when this happens, is for any company where the stock actually changed throughout the year. You know, unlike that previous example where it stayed at 100,000 the entire year, if the number of shares fluctuates up and down and changes, then we actually would have to calculate a weighted average. So we're going to take a look at that type of example. So in this example, this company had the following stock levels during the year. So they started out on January 1st with an initial beginning balance of 100,000 shares. And it stayed that way until April the 1st, at which time they issued an additional 25,000 shares. So that raised the overall level of stock. And then it stayed the same until July the 1st, at which point they actually purchased or bought back 10,000 shares. So that actually lowers the, va the level of stock. And it stayed that way until November the 1st, at which point they issued an additional 10,000 shares, which raised it back up again. And then it stayed that way until the end of the year for a December 31st ending balance of 125,000 shares. So that's an example that's more complex because the amount of stock is fluctuating throughout the year. So as a result, we would actually have to use this information and actually calculate a weighted average. So that's what we're going to do now. Now to set this up for the calculation, we're going to have different levels. So for each level of stock, I'm going to multiply that by a fraction. And that fraction is going to be set up out of a certain number of months out of 12 months. And then that will give me the weighted shares for that particular period. And then I can add all those weighted shares together to get the total weighted average. So if we go back and look at the initial information that we were working with, the first level of stock is a level of 100,000 shares. And it stays that way from January 1st until April 1st. So that means level one, 100,000 shares, January, February, March, three months. Remember, that was from January 1st to April 1st, so January, February, March, three out of 12 months. Three twelfths of 100,000 is 25,000. 
So that's the weighted shares for level one. Then I go back and look at the next change. Now on this change, they added 25,000 shares. So that raises the level from 100 to 125. And that's going to stay the same from April 1st until July or April, May, June. So 125,000 shares, another three months. That's a weighted average for that period of 31,250. Then it goes down 10,000. So from 125 down 10,000, which takes it down to 115, and that's going to stay the same from July 1st to November 1st. So July, August, September, October, four months. So 115,000, four out of 12 months. That's a weighted number of 38,334. And then the final level, down here on November 1st, they issued the additional 10,000 shares. That raises it back up to 125, and it stays that way until the end of the year. So 125, November 1st to the end of the year would be November, December, two months, average of 20,834. And when you do these types of calculations, you always want to go back and make sure that your fractions do add up to 12 out of 12 months. And they do. So I can total up all four of these levels, and that's 115,418. So basically that means that even though the amount of stock changed throughout the year, the average would be 115,418 shares. So that shows you how in some cases the number of shares can be very, very simple like that first example, or it could be as complex as this. It really just depends on the nature of the company and how much the stock changed throughout the year.